Hey guys, it's Sevi, and I'm going to be showing you around my Emerald Peak Serenity Pot. I currently have a Liwa Mansion that I've turned into my own pavilion space. This is a bar area where someone can just hang out at. And then here's the sitting area where guests can kind of clump together and enjoy. And I lit it up with the seashell lamps and put some table centerpieces. And here's another desk reception area with books on it. And behind is the fireplace sitting room section kind of thing where several people can just enjoy a round table conversation or play a game of mahjong. And it feels really warm and cozy, which I love, especially with the couches. And this room is a dining area. So there's the menu and the shelves and some dining tables right there lit up with a lantern. And this is kind of a study office room with the books and the scrolls and shelves and stuff. So Ganyu will be, you know, checking her secretary papers here all through the night. And I lit it up with some seashell lamps and the standing Liwa pavilion lantern. Then the bedroom is a shared bedroom. There are three beds in it. Um, so it would be kind of a family room with a couch and a wardrobe. And then there's a changing area that's hidden by the jade screen. And I tried to liven up my rooms with um, the warm lantern lighting and some flowers and green plants all over. Then upstairs it's a bit bare. This is kind of like an attic library kind of thing where the shelves are, you know, collecting some dust. And then there's a display here of alchemy stuff. And, and I livened it up with the big plant. And there's a harp sitting there. I recently got it and I couldn't put it on the table for some reason. So it's just there for now. And my dogs like to guard the area too. They're very good puppies. And I keep them up here because there's no more space downstairs for the load. Now going outside, I'm trying to wall the entire courtyard with the courtyard wall so I have like over 30 of them right now in my inventory. I put a forge and a sitting area shaded by some trees just so that it's not completely bare. And then I have the corridors here which go up to a pavilion and as you can see I'm still missing a courtyard wall actually. <laughs> I think I only have a couple more to go. I just need to add that one and then replace it and then I just added some small landscaping here behind it so that it's not completely bare. And my piggy is here too. Very good pig, has a nice personality and doesn't run away from me. And he just sits in the glow of the amber stones that I've put around here. Um, and then there's also some bushes and trees. I do wish though that these landforms could have some grass textures so that it's not just bare rock and moss, I guess. So this is just for some height. As you can see, that's my Liwa courtyard pavilion um, in the distance. And yeah, that's my first area. I put some bamboo trees and rocks for extra landscaping. It's not much. I might move them around, but I'm quite happy with this so far. Moving on to the next area, it's going to be still a lot of Liwa focus because I really like the Liwa, um, the Liwa style. It's very, very pretty. So here we have the Liwa lanterns. It's a village with a shopping area or a market stall area in the center for lots of color. You know, when you just come up from the bridge, there's a lot of color greeting you right away. So the shop stalls are side by side and there's pots and shelves behind for some life. This is a kind of village where I imagine every house kind of sells something or every house belongs to a merchant. So that's why I kind of mixed up the residences and the fruit stalls and the pot stalls. And then I put them on some landforms for some height as well. Nothing too drastic like the castles other people have made. I just wanted something a bit calm and relaxing because um, this village is very quaint, it's quiet, it's not 
too exciting quite yet. And I colored it with some of the very bright yellow trees. I also warmed it up with the Liwa style lanterns um, to keep in with the style. And here you can kind of see everything. There's Chubby there waiting for me to buy something from him. <laughs> um, moving on is the hilly trail area. This place isn't that decorated. I kind of dumped my hilly trail stuff here, I guess, but I still managed to make it look okay with a big landform in the center. So that's kind of the centerpiece. Um, and then I surrounded it by the straw huts and the straw stalls and a few rocks as well. Um, I just wanted a nice centerpiece for the hilly trail hut because I actually really like the hilly trail hut and the hilly trail towers and I complemented it with that big tree over there so that it's not just bare. And then there's a tent, an adventurous tent right there. The next area is where I put all my Mondstadt stuff and Actually, the walk there is quite long. I kind of wish we could put teleport waypoints in between. But yeah, this Mondstadt area is neater, more orderly than the Liwa area because I feel like, unlike in Liwa, Mondstadt has some residents who don't really sell things. So they kind of like a quiet life, you know, away from the hustle and bustle of the market. So the cottages are in rows and there is a vineyard private a uh, workspace here with the vine trellises and the mills and stuff and then there's a well and it's walled by the gates and the nice thing about this area is that it's right next to a mountain spring so I feel like people would draw water from here or this is where the well water is sourced from and then it helps them with their work you know with the barrels and washing their tools and stuff and I used the Mondstadt lamp posts to add some order to the rows of the houses. And then there's the windmill there. It's probably my favorite Mondstadt building. It's an amazing height and it gives really great dimension to the area, even if it's just on a flat surface. And if you exit the gate, now we're going to the shopping district of the Mondstadt area. So like I said, I separated the residences from the shops here. And the shops I arranged in a row that kind of borders the pathway from bridge to bridge. So these are all the stalls there interspersed with trees. I kind of wanted to make it like, you know, an outdoor market that's still kind of neat. And behind the stalls are tables and bushes that kind of lining, line everything up, make it neater. Then there's just this loading area. Um, where the extra crates and hay rolls would be placed and right beside there are some tall Mondstadt buildings where I don't know maybe they're the merchant guild or the shopping um, or the merchants compound kind of thing and there's that beautiful golden tree to just add an accent to it all and then yeah like I said um, I bordered them with the hedges and stuff, but I put some sitting areas so that, you know, if shoppers were to get tired from walking around, they could just sit down, grab a cup of tea, and then go back to shopping. And I'm trying to see everything from here. There you go. I put the Mondstadt houses there in the back for some layering and some height as well. Now, going to the next area, um, the small half is unfinished and the large half is what I want to show you. So before we go to my favorite part of the mountain, I'll just show you this slightly unfinished area. This is the latest area I've unlocked, so I'm not completely done with it, but this is where I put the really big multi-level hilly trail hut because Honestly, there's no other place that it fits in. So I just tried to make it look a bit neater by adding the fountain and the tree. 
um, so that the hilly churl hut isn't all alone, you know? And Ganyu can't get down from the pole. Wow. So you might already take a glimpse of the next area in the distance. This is where I put both Liwa and Monstad um, buildings. They're still kind of separated. On the right is Liwa, on the left is Monstad, but it has a big centerpiece in the cent in the middle, <laughs> which I'll get to. So with the Monstad buildings, I just kind of made them face at different angles and then added foliage and trees in between. It's not that excessive, just something simple to give the area some background, context, life. With the Liwa buildings, um, again, I put some stalls and uh, cargo loading and vegetable crates in the center because, again, I feel like Liwa people, all Liwa people sell stuff. And there's the red mauve colored hedges in between. So this centerpiece, I wanted it to make, I wanted to make it more unique than the tall um, rock piling castles that I see a lot. I really love those, but I wanted this to be different. So I made it kind of like a star with the fountain in the center, and then it forks out into two twin corridors and pavilions. And I really like how the, cat the shadows get cast by the sunset here. It's that angles that are really pretty, and everything kind of glows golden and orange in the background because of the amber stones and the golden trees I put in the back. And you can see the different parts of my realm from here. And then when you go to the other corridor and pavilion, you get that really nice view in the distance, which you'll never reach, you know, but it's still nice to look at. And going back to the centerpiece, um, or well, here's the sunset. I love looking at the sunset. So here's the fountain in the middle, and I put some landforms that fork out in different directions, but it's all symmetrical, and that's one thing I want to try here in this area because my previous areas, you know, have land have. Um, rectangles and walls, but then this one is where I tried to go with symmetry with the two sides of the Liwa and the Mondstadt and then the twin pavilions and then I really like it when the lanterns light up at night. I wish I could turn them on manually, but yeah, I tried to distribute the lighting evenly and symmetrically. I think that's one important thing about making your realm come to life would be the lighting the lighting and the color of the foliage. So I only started adding the foliage late because, you know, I wanted to craft and craft and craft furnishings, but the different color foliage add a lot of detail to the place and dimension. And that's pretty much it. Um, that's what my Emerald Peak looks like right now. I'm gonna be doing my floating abode on stream probably um, at twitch.tv slash sevi underscore plays. I stream three times a week, so come join me there, and I currently have several giveaways ongoing. If you want to check them out, check out my latest Saint Chew video, my Twitch channel, my Twitter, join my Discord for more, and I hope you guys enjoyed this teapot tour. I'll probably be uploading more come 1.6 with the new features, but take care everyone, and I'll see you soon.